Hey guys and welcome back to the Coder's Legacy channel. In this video, I'm going to show you guys how we can update plots inside matplotlib. So what does it mean to update a plot? Well, it means that once you've already created your plot, once you've already rendered your graph, it means that we want to update it. Okay, we want to modify it. We want to change it in some way. And this can be either modifying an existing point or maybe adding in a new point or maybe removing a point, okay? So these are the different ways in which we can modify and update our plots. And in this tutorial, I'm gonna show you two different ways that we can do so, okay? And obviously one of these is the better approach, which I will mention by the end of this tutorial, okay? So without any further ado, let's begin. I'll just create our figure and access object first and Cool. And what I'll do is plot our line graph. Okay. And we'll use that. It's a pretty simple graph. But before that, I'm just going to store the values for our line graph in here. Okay. And it can be 2, 6, 9, and 12 random values. Okay. And I'll plot this now. Okay. And call plt.show. Okay. Cool. And here's our graph. Now let's say I want to add in one more point. I want to add a new point to this. Okay, so what I can do here is say we are updating the graph now, updating graph. And down here, what, what I'm gonna do is first call axis.clear. Now what this is gonna do is remove our graph. It's gonna clear our graph. Okay, now what we're, now what we're going to do is update the arrays, update the arrays where the data for our graph is stored. So we can do uh, append five in here, one, two, three, and then we'll append five. And over here in the Y, I'll append something like 11. Okay, and now what we'll do is access.plot and replot this. Whoops. All right, so yeah, replot this, okay? We cleared it, we updated the values, and then we replotted it. So if I run this code now, we get our nice graph here, and it has a new point. Pretty cool, right? Yeah, so that's basically how we update plots. Now, there is another way of doing so, but before that, I just want to show you a slightly better way in which we can update it. Because doing it like this is kind of lame, okay? We don't do it like this. We can use two techniques to properly update a plot, okay? We can either use the animation module or we can use event handling in matplotlib. Now, for this tutorial, I'll go ahead and show you guys a little animation, okay? If you want to know how to do this with event handling, like, you know, you click on a button or you click on a mouse and then the plot updates, we can do that as well. And I'll leave a link to my video on event handling in matplotlib in the description below. Okay, so definitely check that out if you're interested in that kind of thing. You know, press the button A and maybe uh, a new point comes up, press the button B and maybe a point gets removed. That kind of thing you can do in, with event handling in matplotlib. Anyways, so what I'll do here is from the matplotlib animation module, I'm going to import funk animation. Okay, and what I'll do now is just remove that. We don't need that. And uh, let's just remove this because I'll show you the new method, the new method now. Okay, and let's leave that as is. What we need to do here is first define a function. That's how the, uh, that's how the animation module works. Okay, we need a function that it's gonna call. And don't worry, all of this is gonna make perfect sense. Okay, so what we'll do here is append five. We're still going to update the arrays with new values. But the difference is that instead of clearing the plot this time, we're gonna directly update it. Okay, now just, just watch and I will explain everything. What I'm doing here is storing a return object. Uh, I, I just called it ln for line. It's a very common notation used in the documentation everywhere. Uh, basically, every matplotlib function, like bar, like plot, they all have a return type, which you can use to actually access 
and update that plot. Okay, so I stored the return type for this in here. And what we're gonna do now is call the set data function on this. And we'll pass in X and Y into this. Now this is it for this function. Now what we need to do is call our animation module. So here we'll put func animation and the first parameter is the figure. Second parameter is the name of the function. Third parameter is the interval between frames. Okay, so like every three seconds call this function. Okay, now don't pay too much attention here to the animation and how it's done. I did, I'm just using it as a means of demonstrating how graphs are updated because I don't want our graph to be updated instantly, which is what we're currently seeing. I want it to be updated after three seconds so we can actually see it change in front of us. Okay, so I'm just gonna write some fancy code here. Don't pay it too much attention. If you're interested in learning more about this, then definitely check out my video on the, yeah, on the animation in Matplotlib, okay? It's gonna be very worth it, trust me. Okay, and I'm done. All right, cool. Now, before I do this, I'm just gonna show you this with the old method first, okay? I'm just gonna do the access.clear and the entire access.plot thing again, okay? And I'm gonna, gonna run this code just so we can see. Now watch carefully. There we go. After, after three seconds, we noticed that the plot got updated, okay? And one more important thing is that the axis Okay, this x-axis got updated along with the plot. Okay, let me just run that one more time. All right, just pay attention this time to the x-axis here. See, it changed from one to four to one to five. Now this is important. The reason why I'm bringing so much attention to this is because when we use the set data function on our line object over here, and I run this code, you'll notice a slight problem. Okay, it updated. We can see that line over there, but the problem is that the axis did not update along with it, okay? This is a slight problem because we have directly updated the data, okay? When you clear a plot and then you plot it again, it plots it from scratch. So the axis is automatically scaled accordingly. But right now we're updating values in a plot that already exists, in the axis that already exists. So what we need to do is not only update the object, we need to, we need to actually update the axis as well. There's a really easy way of doing so, which is fig, uh, fig dot gca dot relim. Okay, so this basically reassigns the limits. Okay, lim for limits. And if I run this, and we wait three seconds. Okay, that didn't really do anything. And I'm not really surprised, actually, because there are two pieces of code that we actually need to run. I was just curious to see what happens if we ran just one of them. So if I run both of them like we're supposed to, you'll see what happens. Okay, watch now. There we go, there we go, Pro problem solved. Okay, so that's actually what I wanted to show you. And let me just try removing this one. Okay, what auto scale view does is it, it changes your view, right? It kind of zooms it out a bit so that the figure, huh. Okay, yeah, just include both of them. Just include both or there will be problems. Okay, don't try putting in just one of them. That's a big no, no. So yeah. Now, what Autoscale View does is it's in charge of kind of adjusting the view, the viewport, so that you can see the entire graph. And in some cases, you don't even, ha even have to do, to do this, you know? You don't have to do this. Because watch, if we just update the plot and it updates, what we can actually do is just navigate it, okay, using the toolbar tools over here. So we can navigate it and actually see the whole thing. Okay, so that's basically, it, this approach offers us a lot of flexibility, and most importantly, it's actually efficient. It's actually performance efficient. 
because in the old approach, what, what we need to do is first clear the plot and then redraw the whole plot from scratch. This approach is a much more efficient and it's going to be your go-to approach in a performance, uh, performance-driven application. I think I should mention this, that the ways of updating different plots, it actually varies based off the plot. Set data only works for line charts, okay? For example, let's say that we had a bar chart, okay? And this returns to us, you know, a collection of bars. Let me, let me just remove all this. We don't need that. Okay, so in a scenario like this, what we would do, for example, if we wanted to, like, update the first bar, so we would do set height and then change the height like that, okay? So you can access the bars by using the index numbers over here, okay? And yeah, so the the thing is, what I'm trying to say is that the approach is is going to vary a bit from graph to graph, okay? And one thing that you can do in such situations is, you know, update every graph like this. So you can use enumerate over here. This is just some intuition I'm trying to give you guys here, okay? And then you can call some function here and then update it, okay? That's just something I wanted to tell you guys. Just don't try using set data everywhere. It's not going to work everywhere. So always be sure to research the graph, the chart that you're using properly before you try updating it. Okay. Now, again, you could just go with the first approach and do the clear and then the plot, but that is not efficient and it is not the recommended option. Okay. So just keep what I said in mind. All right. And yeah, with that, that's it. Let's end the video. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope you guys learned something new today. And if you want to stay updated with more Matplotlib content like this, if you want to learn more Matplotlib tips and tricks, definitely subscribe to the channel. Leave a like, leave a comment. Let me know if there's something you want to see me do. Okay, something you want me to explain. All right. And yeah, with that, I'll see you guys in the next video. Later.